Terrence Bud Crawford. Why not Jerron Boots Ennis? Let's talk. <laughs> Nah, I want a body on my record. Now I wanna see you fight motherfuckers, I do. Alright? I'm with you. I'm with you. As long as as long as you're trying to fight the great, the your or the, the, the best competition. Terrence Bug Crawford. You have three fights that people really care about you fighting. Three. There's a rematch with Errol Spence, Canelo Alvarez, and Jerron Boots Ennis. That's pretty much it. I mean, there's really no one else for you to fight. Yeah, I mean, you, know, you can throw the Charlos out there. That's fine. Throw the Charlos out there. How much interest? Not very much. The order of interest for Terrence Crawford, Danilo Alvarez, Jerron Boots Ennis, Earl Spence rematch. That is the order of interest for the fights that you have in front of you. There is no hype, no hoopla, no nothing for Mog Mormav Boom. This dude you're about to fight, Bok. Mordor boom. There, there's no interest. There's no hype. There's no buzz. Nobody cares. It, it just is what it is, man. There's no, there's no push to you to fight mock move boom. You know, bust a move boom is garbage. No one's really checking for this fight. No one's checking. I'm tired of you people telling me over and over and over again when it's a guy you want to glaze, man. Just because you don't know who this fighter is, just, nobody knows who this fighter is. It's not just because someone doesn't know, it's, just, it's because no one wants to see it. No one is asking and no one cares. The fights that we are asking for is Terrence Crawford versus Canelo versus Jerron Boots Ennis and versus Errol Spence rematch. Those are the fights that we're asking for. Those are the fights we want. Now, there this is, has a, a, a serious dilemma because... When Jerome Boots Ennis was Errol Spence's mandatory. And I kept telling y'all, Boots said he'll fight all both of them, all of them. He wants to fight all of them. Errol Spence, Terrence Crawford, you guys kept telling me, no, he's not even mentioning Boots' name. He's not calling for Boots. He don't want to fight Boots. There's nowhere. He's never called Boots out. You guys, you're acting like he's calling out Boots. He don't want to fight Boots. I mean, uh, he don't want to fight Sp uh, Crawford. He wants to fight Spence. He wants to fight Spence. He's not calling out uh, Bud's name. He's not calling out Bud. Boots wants to fight Spence. Boots don't care about no Bud. He wants to fight Spence. Boots is Spence is mandatory. But why, why is Spence stuck at his mando? Boots don't care about no Bud. Boots ain't calling out Bud. Boots never mentioned Bud's name. He's never one time called out no Bud. That's a lie. You're lying. He's calling out Spence. Well, all he's ever been calling out. All he's ever called out. Ever since Errol Spence lost to Terrence Crawford, the only name he's called out is Terrence Bud Crawford. That's the only name he's called out. And all you guys did is make excuse after excuse after excuse. You picked up the flag, you picked up the goal pole, you ran all over the place. Now you guys are telling me what does, man, boots don't bring nothing. Boots don't bring nothing to the table. What the fuck does that mean? What does Mock Mormon have Mock Move Bum? What does he bring? Oh, BF, he, he's a champion of the weight class. So? So what? And? Terrence Crawford's already two times undisputed in two different weight classes. Oh, BF, he wants to be undisputed in the third weight class. Okay, cool. No problem. Fine. Fine. No problem. I got, nothing, I got no problem with that. But that's just you guys. Because you fear Terrence Crawford fighting Jerron Boutinis. You have a fear of that fight. You literally have a fear of it. And, and it's, it's blatantly obvious. 
like it, it, it this is a it's a it's, it's a weird thing that anybody else you guys are down for hell even Errol Spence y'all was cool with y'all wanted it but when it comes to Jerome Boots Ennis y'all got every excuse in the world every excuse in the world it's like oh nah man nah he, he ain't gotta fight him what he gotta fight him for what does he do for him what does he do for him well what did Amir Khan do for Terrence Crawford what did what did quadruple or not quadruple armadillo but what did uh David Ambrosia what did he do for Terrence Crawford what did he do uh Jose Benavides what did he do those were all voluntary fights I don't remember any of you guys ran around and oh come on man Amir Khan don't do anything for Terrence Crawford why why you want you want Amir Khan Jose Benavides he's beneath me Jose Benavidez don't do nothing for Terrence Crawford. Why Terrence Crawford got to fight Jose Benavidez? Jose Benavidez ain't nobody. It's it's very very weak. You guys don't have a set standard that you just follow. You really don't have a set standard, right? If you set the rule, the 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 game in the beginning. And the game was belts, money. We can rock on with that. Because now I know that it's belts. You're trying to get belts. And if you can't get the belts, you want the money. Because it's belts, money. If you can get them both, that's the ideal. Belts and money is ideal. But if you can't get both, then you want belts and if you can't get both you want money right if you set the stat if you set the tapes uh, set the table then i know where you're at so so if you guys say man this guy don't bring it into the table i know you're talking about legacy belts he don't got a belt so if he doesn't have a belt then i understand that's the reason why you guys are saying this guy brings it to the table right i get it and if your table is set to say Man, this guy, if, if, you're, if you're talking about money and you say this guy knows to bring it to the table, then I'm saying, okay, you're talking about a guy that's not a known commodity. He's not a draw. You know, you're not going to get a lot of butts and seats and ticket sales and pay-per-views or views or whatever the case you're looking for. So it's a money thing. I got it. I, I know what you're talking about. But you guys use that stuff willy-nilly whenever you want to. You use it whenever you want to. Whenever you want. If you want to justify something, you'll say, oh, man, this guy don't bring nothing to the table. He don't bring nothing to the table. Who is this guy? This guy don't bring nothing to the table. That's, that's if you don't want to fight. If you do want to fight, you'll say, just because you guys don't know who it is, this guy's a good fighter. He'll, he'll, he'll give all these other guys tough competition. That's what y'all did with Jerron Boots Ennis. That's exactly what y'all did with Boots. When Errol Spence was trying to become undisputed at 147. Trying to become undisputed. You guys are like, oh no, you gotta fight your mandatory. He wasn't even his mandatory yet. He didn't even become his mandatory to the year that he fought Ter uh, Errol Spence, uh, Terrence Crawford, I mean. That was the year he became the mandatory. He wasn't even the mandatory before. He was just number one. That's all he was. He was just number one. He wasn't called as the mandatory. And when he was called as a mandatory, it was the same year that they fought. And in the same year, he took the interim title to become the mandatory to the, to the winner. And then after that, Terrence Crawford dropped the ball, stripped of the belt because he refused to fight the man. And for like two years, see, we're talking about Errol Spence need to fight boots. Why don't you fight boots, fight boots, fight boots, fight boots. For like two years. A little bit, a little bit under two years. Fight boots, boots. Why don't you fight boots? You ducking boots. Boots don't want to fight you. Boots, want, boots don't want to fight Bud. Boots wants to fight Spence. Why don't Spence fight boots? Boots, boots. boots. He's scared of boots, boots. Well, now Boots is Terrence Crawford's problem. And <laughs> now you guys are telling me he don't bring nothing to the table. Now he's Terrence Crawford's problem. You guys are saying, oh, come on, man. He, he ain't worried about him, man. He worried about mock move more than that bum. Bro, Errol Sp I mean, Terrence Crawford versus Jerron Boots and is a bigger fight than Terrence Crawford versus mock more than that bum. It is a bigger fight. It's a bigger draw. It's a bigger everything. It's a bigger fight. It's a bigger fight, bro. Bro, Jerome Boots Ennis versus David Ambrosia was promoted more than Terrence Crawford versus Mock Mordo of Bone. 
Terrence Crawford and Mordor Bum, I've probably seen one or two things promoting this. And the one of them that I saw was just recently. I mean, this dude, Madrimadav Bum, is garbage, bro. Did anybody worry about Madrimadav? Madrimadav Bum is tra Terrence Crawford's going to walk straight through this guy. He's got like, what, 10 fights? He's got like 10 fights. Man, Budrick's going to walk straight through uh, Mordor Bum. He's going to walk straight through this guy. Whatever. Man. Everybody's going to be glazing and talk about how great. But, but he, he is great. Don't get it twisted. But where he's at right now, there's only three fights for him. Canelo Alvarez, number one, that's belts and money. Belts and money. You fight Can Ter uh, Canelo Alvarez at 168, Terrence Crawford, you can become the undisputed champion in three weight classes. At 168, you can become undisputed. It's belts and there's a bag with you fighting Canelo Alvarez. The other, the other fight is Terrence Crawford versus Errol Spence. That is bag right now because Ter uh, Errol Spence don't have no belts. He don't have no belts. So if Terrence Crawford fights uh, Mark Mordor Bum and beats him, supposedly there's two belts on the line. So he'll have two belts, the WBA and the and, or WBC, whichever one it is. No, it's WBA. The WBA and the WB or WBO, whatever, bro. Two belts. He's going to be an email champion because there could be a vacant belt on the line. And then the belt that Madrimadov Bum has. Right? So he's going to stop Mordor Bum and then... He'll be the WBA or WBO or whichever one of them damn belts it, it is. And then there's supposed to be a vacant belt in the line. So with Errol Spence fighting Funderburg at the end of this year, Errol Spence beats Funderburg, then that's two belts, potentially two belts. Who knows? Well, well, that's an undisputed fight right there. But I'm talking about right now. Right now, Errol Spence doesn't have any belts. So Terrence Crawford beating Mordor Bum will have belts. So then you fighting Errol Spence will be for strictly money because Errol Spence won't have no belts. So I understand. You have the money in the the money and the belts with Canelo. You have the money fight. And then the fight that you, the one that people just are clamoring for. The one that people are like, bro, this is the test. Because it's a mirror reflection of yourself. Like when you actually think about it. When you look around and get a general consensus of things, people are not picking Canelo Alvarez to beat Terrence Crawford. Hell, I'm not picking Canelo Alvarez to beat Terrence Crawford. Unless, unless Terrence Crawford has no tune which is what Canelo Alvarez would do, and they fight straight at 168 right away. If they do that, that is, that is favoring Canelo Alvarez. If they don't do that, if Terrence Crawford has like a a catchweight fighter or something like that, or just a couple of fights at 54 before he fights Canelo Alvarez, I'll favor Terrence Crawford. But if he don't have, if he just had this more door bump and then his next fight is Canelo, man, he's going to get whatever. It's a whole other video. But then in the fight where Errol Spence, you've already beat Errol Spence. Quite convincingly. So Errol Spence now at a, at a, a weight class that's more, um, in more conducive to him actually, you know, being good, you know, with weight wise, he's, he's always been good, always been special. He was on my pound of pound list for a while, my number one for a while. So when you think about it, him just being able to fight in a weight that class is more close to his natural weight, which I believe his best weight class is 160, if he even makes it that long. He might retire before then, but I believe 160 is his best weight class. Like I believe Boots' best weight class is 168. Terrence Crawford versus Jerron Boots Ennis is damn near a mirror image. Is damn near a mirror image, man. It's a it's a mirror image of the two. Just one of them is 36 and the other one's 27, 26, 26, 27, and the other one's 36. It's the only difference. It's a mirror image of each other. That's why it's so intriguing, and that's why it's the most dangerous. This Ter Terrence Crawford versus Jerron Boots Ennis is the most dangerous fight. For Terrence Crawford. I believe Terrence Crawford versus Errol Spence. I believe he he's already he beat Errol Spence. So in his mind, he's easy work, right? And he's already saying Errol Spence don't hit hard and shit like that. So it, I, I believe mentally it, he, he's he's got the edge over Errol Spence because he's beat Errol Spence. But, you know, we all, I know what I know. And Errol Spence was also, you know, at a weight class that he was not trying to be at. So if Terrence Crawford had the advantage on that one. Doesn't mean it's going to be the same, and it don't mean it'll be different in the rematch. The Canelo Alvarez piece, Canelo's—he's just size matters, bro. He's going to be just way bigger than him. 
way bigger. And he's going to make Terrence Crawford move up to a weight class Terrence Crawford's not comfortable at. All right? But with Jerron Boutinis, that's an excuseless fight for both of them. Excuseless. All right? Excuseless. Terrence Crawford, you cannot, you cannot say, oh, man, well, you know, I, I wasn't in my right weight class because you're bigger than him right now. You're, you're fighting at 54. He fights at 47. So you're the bigger guy. So he's moving up to your weight class if they're all going to fight. And he already said he would move up to your weight class to fight you. Yeah. There, you, there, you, he's a spinning, is a, a spinning image, bro. It's, you're looking in the mirror. This is, this is the most dangerous fight for him because any move you make, he can do. Any adjustment you can make, he can do. Like, of course, you got the more experienced bud and you got the, the been under the bigger lights, the brightest lights, you know, on the biggest stage, the biggest stage. So experience-wise, and, and them lights, that though, they mean something. So in that capacity, yeah, I, I give it to Bud. That's it. That's it. Speed, power, quickness, footwork. Those are all comparable. If not, the damn near the same or potentially Boots is better. That is, the, that is a dangerous, dangerous fight. And that's why his fans, that's why Budrick fans don't want it. That's why Budrick fans are saying, oh man, we want Canelo because Canelo is flat-footed. It's going to stand right there. It gives him an opportunity for three, three uh, division undisputed and a huge payday. So, of course, y'all want Canelo. Of course, you would. You wouldn't want that Jerron Boots and his work. As you can claim, he brings nothing to the table. But the problem with that is Terrence Crawford has fought many volunteer fighters, volunteer fighters that they weren't the draw at all. Bud was the draw. Bud versus Boots. Bud is still the draw, but the fight is now the draw. Right? The fight is now the draw. Bud is still it. Bud is still the guy over Boots, like drawing power wise. But it's the fight itself that's the draw. It's the fight itself that is a bigger draw than either one of them individually. The fight itself. It's gigantic. Gigantic. You, you, man, someone's not making it, and it's going to be an exciting, exciting fight because the old dog would have to would have to use old tricks. Put it that way. And I'm not even going to go into the breakdown of the fight or what I believe. I'll do that another day. But what I'm saying is, the Bud fans, it's a fan. They that's a fight they don't want. They prefer the, the, re, the rematch with Errol Spence because they got the victory over Errol, so they feel comfortable. They prefer the fight with Canelo Alvarez because Canelo Alvarez is flat-footed. They do not prefer Jerron Boots Ennis. They do not want Jerron Boots Ennis, and they'll make up every excuse on why they won't press for Bud to fight. I don't think Bud wants to fight Jerron Boots Ennis. I think he did at a time. I think he was cool with it at the time. And, you know, if the, if the money's right, he, he, still, he still might be good with it now. He might be good with it now. But it is not his choice. It's not the first choice he's going after. <laughs> Damn straight the first choice. Because he could have fought him. He could have fought him. Easily could have fought him. But he didn't. On multiple occasions. And Crawford fans are not even trying to... Y'all are, are hypocrites. Y'all ran through here talking about, oh, he's the Mando. He's the Mando. He's the Mando for Spence. He wants Spence. He's mentioning Spence's name. He's calling for Spence. Why don't Spence fight him? He's calling for Spence. Now he's calling for Bud. And he was calling for Bud then. Clearly calling, but y'all don't care. He is blatantly calling for Bud now. It's not even a question who he wants to fight. It's not even a question. He wants Terrence Bud Crawford. That's who he wants. What is y'all's excuse now? What's your excuse? Oh, he's going for Undisputed at 154? Okay, cool. Jerome Boots Ennis can go to 54. No problem. No problem. He said he wants to unify. Because Terrence Crawford is about to fight. Mock Mormon have bump. So he can unify. They can fight next year. So he can fight next year. Hell, they can fight the end of this year. If he can't get a unification, they can fight the end of this year. And if they can't, and, and, and probably not, because he's going to be trying to fight Canelo at the end of this year, which Canelo's not going to fight him. Canelo's going to be fighting Berlanga or somebody else, some other bump. They can fight the end of this year. They're not going to. But I'm just curious. Why are the Bud fans so quiet about this? 
Oh, you're going to be in the comments talking about, oh, well, he offered him a fight last December. BF, you already said it last December when he fought Ambrosia last December. He, December, BF, December, yo, December, BF. I know you're going to be saying that, but we're talking about right now. I made my stance on that. I gave you all my stance on that. My videos are not down. They're still up right now. I'm talking about right now because he can fight this man next. He can tell this dude, Boots, all right, Boots, y'all thinking he all this and thinking he all that. Cool. Well, I, I just beat Mark Moore in that bump. You can come up to 154 and get this work. What's up? Because I'm not going to 47. You can come to 154, though. He could do that. Why aren't fans pressing for this? His fans. His protection company, his protection squad, why aren't y'all pressing for this? Why don't y'all want him? Why don't y'all want Boots and Bud? Why don't y'all want that fight? It's a lot of skullduggery going on in the sport of boxing. It's a lot of cowardice. Y'all are some scary ass people, bro. Y'all y'all don't want to see the best to fight the best. You just want to see your fighter be his best against bums. You don't want nobody tested. You want your fighter to be undefeated against bums and just talk about everything else. I want my fighters to be gladiators. Hold on the video. BFTB. Shout to the mighty, mighty LDBC. And I'm out.